Maurizio Sarri was born in Naples in 1959, but spent most of his childhood in Florence, Tuscany. His father, who was born and raised in the region, moved back when Sarri was young to work as a crane driver, and the family followed. Sarri was brought up in the Filine Valdano commune, where he lived above a bar and learned to play football on the streets. As a youngster, he wasn't overly gifted with the ball at his feet. Instead, he was attracted to the analytical tactical side of the game. That Sarri chose to pursue a career in football was not inevitable. He came close to opting for cycling instead, having turned out for local team Pedale Filinesi. His father had also been a professional cyclist for two years, but Sarri did, in the end, choose football and set his sights on one day representing his boyhood club. At his Tuscan school, he'd been the only Napoli fan amongst his friends, but that didn't dampen his enthusiastic support. As a player, Sarri was a defender and turned out for local amateur side Filine. He'd had trials with Torino and Fiorentina, but failed both and soon after retired, citing injury problems. Having struggled as a player, Sarri turned to the world of finance and got a job as a banker at Monte de Pasci de Siena, the world's oldest bank. He'd studied accountancy and excelled in the job, travelling around Europe from London to Luxembourg. Banking became Sarri's day job, but it wasn't fulfilling and the urge to remain in football was strong. So he went into coaching, taking over a number of amateur clubs and investing all of his free time in his development as a manager. He worked at Stier, Felesi, Cavrilia and Antella, who he guided to promotion from the Italian sixth tier during the 1990s. It was hard work, but Sarri didn't want to give up on his dream of coaching at the highest level. The banking was significantly more lucrative too, but Sarri found more reward from coaching and he always preferred wearing tracksuits over suits. In 2001, while coaching Serie D side Sansovino, Sarri finally quit his job as a banker to focus solely on football. It was, he said, the one job I would do for free. He'd made progress, but still had a long way to go. But he wasn't deterred and continued to work tirelessly in pursuit of his end goal. A tough life is getting up at six in the morning to go to a factory, he said, perhaps with his father in mind. At Sansovino, a small club based in Monte Sansovino, some of Sarri's idiosyncrasies began to come to the fore. One day, while pulling into the stadium in his BMW shortly before a game, Sarri accidentally hit a car belonging to one of his own players. Sansovino won the game, and so the following weekend, Sarri hit the same car, this time deliberately. Again, Sansovino won. He became known as Mr. 33, having supposedly prepared no fewer than 33 set-piece routines. We used four or five of them in the end, he later said. Such stories point to his almost obsessive approach, and his attention to detail stood him in good stead for his eventual rise up the leagues. Sarri threatened to quit coaching for good if he didn't win the title with Sansovino, but fortunately, that's just what he did. From there, he moved on to the third-tier side, San Giovanesi, in 2003, where he won promotion in his first season. Then, in 2005, he got his first Serie B job with Pescara, in itself a commendable rise before moving after just one year to Arezzo to replace the sacked Antonio Conte. He couldn't prevent Arezzo's relegation from the second tier, but offered more than a glimpse of his managerial talent. He oversaw an improbable 2-2 draw in a cup tie against Juventus and ran Milan close in a quarter-final of the Coppa Italia with a 2-1 aggregate defeat. It seemed Sarri's upward trajectory would continue, although for the following few years he found himself flitting between jobs in the second and third tiers. In 2012, what seemed a low point led to the break Sarri needed. He was sacked by Sorrento and taken on by Empoli, then in Serie B. He guided the club to promotion, playing a brand of thrilling, high-intensity football that attracted countless admirers. Finally, at the age of 53, Sarri had reached Italy's top flight. And Paoli impressed in Serie A and Sarri's reputation began to rise. Napoli's president, Aurelio De Laurentiis, was one of those enamoured by Sarri's style of play and so he appointed him in 2015. From there, Sarri went from strength to strength. His astonishing rise was completed. In the summer, he replaced Conte once again, this time at Chelsea. It's a remarkable ascension. While Pep Guardiola was leading Barcelona to La Liga and Champions League success, Sarri had yet to reach Italy's top flight and was still very much an unknown figure in the world of football. Now, the two are equals and set to battle each other in the Premier League. That in itself is some achievement.